This is Grandfather Carter. My pleasure. Not my grandfather, you understand. My father-in-law. Erica, what may I ask? Hers and steel. Oh, uh, would you mind repeating that? Hers and steel. H-E-R-Z-E-N-S-T-I-E-L? Well, what do you know about that? Talk about small world. Name in a million Hers and steel. Your family still keep up correspondence with the Cincinnati branch? Played basketball with the youngest boy, Carl. Never forget the time Carl hooked up an extension cord and brought a lamp out onto the porch. Grandpa, wait, wait, listen, wait. And we were looking at these old pictures. There was this one of Fred, Carl's father. Goes way back to World War I, of course. And he had these patent leather boots up to here. Uh, the uh, spurs, long sword, handsome figure of a man. Very handsome. What he had been, you see, back in Germany was in the elite guards. And the spurs make me think that it was the horse guards of Kaiser Wilhelm. Old Kaiser himself standing up there in front. That's what started the rumors. But you can tell your folks for me that old Fred was no more a German spy than Duncan here. That's just a lot of talk. Now, the first thing to do is to program this. Monday and Wednesdays, I do three hours at Children's Hospital. Your late afternoons are free, I assume. I guess, except when social orientation takes trips. Oh, I'm sure we can synchronize. You see, uh, Mr. Kotcher, my husband and I, both feel that it's come to a point where, well, it isn't quite fair, it isn't quite right to make a full-time babysitter out of Grandpa here. <coughs> and uh, we're invited to dinner tonight. Uh, if you're prepared to stay, would that be all right? All right. Well, uh, pretty short notice if you ask me. I'm sure Miss uh, Hersensteel has a lot more important things to do. You run along now, Miss Hersensteel. Dunk and I will hold down the fort. Just let me get a quick shower and wash my hair. Come on. We'll talk things over while it dries, and I'll show you how the kitchen works. One thing I want clearly understood, Eric, I believe in getting off on the right foot, is that when I leave you in charge of Duncan, you're in charge of him, period, 100%. By any other name which smell as sweet. Time to dunk, dunk. Come on, Cookie. Listen, when he goes into the pool, he likes to be by the warm water jet, you know. I know, then he pees. <laughs> Let's go into the water. 
water. It's grammatically incorrect, you know. Syntactically, I should say. Unless, of course, they seriously want to exclude everybody but children and mothers under the age of eight. And there aren't too many of those. do. I'm uh, Joseph Kotcher, Duncan's grandfather. Okay. Hop in. Oh, uh, well, why don't you youngsters run along? Don't worry about Duncan and me. We'll bring up the rear. Uh-uh, not supposed to. Come on, pumpkin. Well, I know, but Wilma oh, wouldn't Lord. mind. She... Do you want to ride or not? Well, thanks. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs> but no, I don't think so. Keep meaning to check old Spock and see if he doesn't have some theory or other on why they all get such a charge out of doing that. Son Gerald did it, grandson Duncan does it. Pitches something or other out of the crib and then just stands there looking down over the side. Always reminds me of someone at the rail of a big ocean liner. Very sad thing, very sad thing. Very deep down there, gone. Whatever it is, gone forever. My wife and I, Vera and I, we made two trips to Europe by boat. Right after we were married, first time, second time, just before she died. It was a Mauritania both times, same ship, different name, though. I mean, the old one and the new one. I guess the new one's finished now, too. There's a couple of people here to see you. Oh. Listen, before we go in, they make this sound pretty serious. Now, man to man, what exactly happened in the park today? Park? Well, what was with you and this little girl? Oh, that. Well, a little misunderstanding all around. Man to man, Gerald, it's quite possible that I saved a child from pneumonia or forestalled a bad case of mastoiditis. What is Less it? serious than used to be, of course, mastoiditis, <laughs> antibiotics and all. Oh, Remember the summer we had to stop you from diving, Gerald? What the doctor decided was that your head was too narrow. Well, your oh, mother's but... head was too narrow. And your eustachian tube wasn't draining properly. The ordinary person, you see, gets water up his eustachian tube, drains right out again, slick as a whistle. Yours, the water kept getting stuck up there. Thing pinched right in the middle, formed like one of those little egg timers. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on Duncan just in case he's inherited the same anomaly. Pa, I, I believe you met Miss Fisher. Oh, yes. yes this how do you is Miss Roberts. Miss Robert. Roberts Mr. is Kutcher. with the Parks Department. My pleasure. You ladies care for some coffee or maybe something stronger? Gerald, I don't think your father no, no, just understands. Just a minute, just a minute. Let's not get excited. May I moderate me? this? Won't you all please sit down? Thank you. As you know, Mr. Kotcher, we have a few rules in the parks. 
gambling, intoxicating liquor, lewd behavior. All for it. People can't behave themselves in a the park, shouldn't be in there. Now, Mrs. Fisher has made a complaint against you. My job is to find out what ensued today between you and her daughter, Gabriel. 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 I told you what ensued, and I have two witnesses. He won't leave the kids alone. He can't keep his hands off them. He touched her indecently. He touched her where? Behind. Pop, is this right? You know, the more I think about it, the more I know I've overstressed mastoiditis. It's true the child was suffering a chill when I approached her, but now I'm inclined more towards psychogenic shock. Just try and get a straight answer out of him. Pop, Pop, if you did a thing like this, it's inexcusable. Now, tell me the truth. Well, I was talking to the other day. Didn't catch his name. He thought the whole thing started with John McGraw. Seems to me it might have been Casey Stengel or maybe old Newt Rock. That's what he does. That's what he does. What the hell has Casey Stengel got to do with anything? Well, I'm trying to tell you, Gerald. I get it all day long. You ask him a question, he goes off on some crazy tangent. The way I remember it, when you did something great, home run or touchdown or whatever it happened to be, the other player shook your hand or patted you on the back for congratulations or when the coach sent a new player into the game. Give him a nice start, you know. Make an interesting article for Sports Illustrated, say. Find out just who started all this patting on the ass business. Oh, yes, it would. Yeah, oh, I, I never thought of it that way. May I have a glass of water, please? Pop, uh, what you're saying is then that all you did was to give this girl a little pat in the behind. Most natural thing in the world, Gerald. Part of our culture nowadays, like I do with Duncan. Meaning on your way, old man. Paddle your own canoe. Get in there and pitch. Paddle your own canoe my foot. Oh, not interested in sports, Miss Fisher? I don't find that very reprehensible. Do you, Miss Roberts? Friendly tap on the butt? No. Oh, well, I have an appointment, so goodbye, Mr. Kotcher. Yes, goodbye, Miss Roberts. I'll have to make out a report on this, but I'll attend to it. Oh, just one more thing. You name it, dear. From now on, would you please do me a favor and stay the hell out of the mother's enclosure? All right. <laughs> Peek at your quarterly sales report this afternoon, Gerald. Just great. Very impressive growth factor. I notice this fellow you've got in charge of the Bakersfield Fresno district is a real humdinger. First rate. Now, what I would do in your position, Gerald, the company used to use me the same way, is to start moving this man around. Doesn't make any difference what the product is. Digital computers in your case, hardware in mine. The principle is the same thing. Move your strong man into your weaker positions. Temporarily, of course. Sort of a uh, roving advisor. Stir things up. Keep your other salesmen on their toes. Scares them a little. Where's Goon? Get that other thing from Mars. Oh, leave that. I'll tidy up and put him to bed as soon as I finish my cigar. Hey, Pop. Look what we got here. He's starting at the Paris tonight. Festival of Laurel and Hardy. Getting nothing down. Hi, Erica. Hi. It's a nice to tell them the number's on the call. You know, I'd like to go myself, but uh, we've got this damn party. It's later in the week. What is it you like and I should know by now? Coco Pepsi. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper? Why don't you just stroll on down there and have yourself a good old-fashioned belly laugh? Yeah, I just might do that, Gerald. Where'd she get her anyway? Where'd she come from? You know anything get about her? her? The babysitter. Oh, through Charlotte Hunter, I think. She needs the money, that's all I know. Damned extravagance, that's all I know. I know you're doing well financially, Gerald, and I'm proud of you. I just hate to see you throw your money around like that when I'm available. It's... Look, enjoy yourself. Erica, make yourself at home, you know. Stop it. You'll wake Mr. Kotcher. Who? Grandpa Kotcher. I thought you said he went to the cinema. I guess. Uh, stop it. What if Mrs. Ward can spring the pop quiz? I don't You care. promised to help me with that plot diagram. Yes, you did. 
Come on, be more serious-minded. There's supposed to be a vertical plot and a horizontal plot. What kind of freaky thing is all that? I, I can't see where one leaves off and the other begins. Well, this begins here, and this comes off here. <sighs> and, uh, I'm very big on the horizontal. You take the vertical and I'll be in Scotland. Oh! <laughs> Stop it, Benny! 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 Why do you have to come in every ten minutes and check this kid? What's he gonna do, run away or something? Yeah. I told my mother I'd be home at 10.30. And it's 10.30. You know, my mother gets these migraines. See you tomorrow, then. Sleeve. I thought I'd make myself some cocoa. Well, I thought he was taking my pills. Sorry, but you uh, go back to bed here. We'll clean up. Well, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take us. I wouldn't take a, an additional sedation if you'd taken a second. She shouldn't do that, Gerald. She shouldn't take another tranquilizer. She's had her second all tonight, hasn't she? And then you've been drinking at the party. Not much. Gerald, listen to me for a moment. I find myself. Listen to me, please. I find myself in a very awkward position here. Extremely awkward. Oh, place. Pop, why the hell didn't you skewered on light. the horns of an ugly dilemma? On one hand, I find the role of informer a highly repugnant one. At the same time, I must consider what is best for Duncan. We'll but it involves, it, the it involves a moral judgment I am not prepared to make. Now, the act of copulation in itself isn't the factor it used to be. I realize that. Young people look at things differently. Well, Tempest Fugit. The other thing is you know how I feel about Duncan. And I think I can look after him as well, if not a damn sight better than any teenaged mercenary, quite apart from all that humpety jump on the sofa sandwiched in, so to speak, between English literature and algebra. Ticklish situation. I do what I have to do. And I risk being accused of ulterior motives of just wanting this girl out of the way. You see that, don't you, Gerald? Quis custodiat ipse custodes. That's what it all boils down to, son. Quis custodiat ipse custodes. What's that? Well, in other words, Gerald, I forget that you only had one year of Latin. Who shall keep the keepers themselves? That is the question here. I don't know the answer, son. I don't know the answer. Tell me what to do. I need your help. Tell me what to do. Well, let's sleep on it, shall we, Pop? All right. All right, Gerald. Good enough. Thank you for hearing me out. I feel much better now. God bless you. God bless you, Gerald. You sure you wouldn't like a cup of cocoa? Joe, we should. Why not? Oh, 
I can't. What's the matter? My hem's caught on the gear shift thing. night a little talk you didn't say anything to Wilma did you but you can understand I was pretty upset last night Gerald I can't blow the whistle on this girl I just can't do it not under the circumstances I can't be the one to cast the first stone you get my meaning don't you not old Joe Kotcher no sir so what do you say we forget the whole thing okay okay pop anything you say okay listen Gerald you don't happen to remember our 1925 Essex, do you? No, probably not. It was a wonderful car. Climbed Pikes Peak twice, never boiled. just as I was getting out of the shower. He's getting nuttier by the minute, among other things. I know. Old people are a big problem. Nationally, it's a staggering problem. But on the local level, I just had it. I know, I know, I know. What about Erica? You gonna let her go? Now, look here, Gerald. We agreed not to involve Wilma. That was highly confidential. Well, out of my head. My brother's a guardian. He talked it over with his wife, and... He decided that the best thing for Erica, or the least embarrassing for her, was to make a complete break with all the friends here and go off someplace. Well, in that case, Pop can take over again for a while. Not on your life. The last time Grandpa brought him back from one of their little excursions, I smelled beer on Duncan's breath. All he does is let him suck the foam a little. Half the time, I can't even find out where they've been. It worries me sick. One more thing like that park thing. In all fairness, Wilma, Pop didn't do anything wrong. We established that. You don't have to check the refrigerator door ten times a day because he leaves it just open. You don't use the back bathroom, and I know I don't have to, but it is more convenient when I'm doing the laundry, and I don't know how many times I've told him, but he still does it. He still leaves the seat up. I'll speak to him about it. I'll tell you something else. Did you see the water bill last month? Uh, whatever it is, we can afford it. The point I'm making here, Jerry, old is... Old people like to water. For some reason, you ever notice how many old people are always watering? The point I'm making is he must have 15 or maybe $20,000 of his own in the bank. So it's not I as if he were... I don't know exactly how much money he's got. So it's not as if he were destitute or something like that. The original idea was on a temporary basis, wasn't it? To see how he liked California. Well, he likes it just fine. He's been liking it fine for a long time now. It's not as if he was mentally incompetent, either. I wouldn't be too sure of that. Who ever heard of anyone feeding a baby pizza at 11 o'clock in the morning with anchovies? If he's physically incompetent, I'll tell you that. Oh, come on, Wilma. He's in great shape for his age. He's as strong as a horse. Well, other people have old relatives around, at least to fix things. Charlotte Hunter has an uncle, I think. All he ever does is break things. Well, how can I just throw him out? I just can't call up the vet and tell him to come put him out of his misery. Now, that's a sick thing to say. Well, what do you want me to do? Well, just do something, Jerry. I'm at the end of my wick. You what? I'm at the... Just do something, Jerry, please. Don't get technical with me. I 
wasn't talking about a nursing home or anything like that, but aren't there places? Mm -hmm. You get wind of anything like that, oh boy. I'm sorry. Gerald, you're a very hard man to find these days. I realize that you have other matters on your mind, but I'm very much concerned about young Erica, and I consider what you did to be a breach of, of confidence. Erica's gonna be just fine, Pop. Her brother got her a good job in San Bernardino. I understand she's leaving Saturday. Why? Why what? Leaving. I don't see any basis for banishment in one quick frolic on the sofa, however ill-advised. Banish anybody, I'd banish Romeo. Boy gives me the creeps. Still tied to his mother's apron strings on the one hand. On the other, he's jumping all over this girl while he's supposed to be helping her with her homework. Okay, Gerald. Somebody? Well, not exactly. Would uh, you like to take a stretch, Pop? Sure, sure thing. That's uh, quite a layout they got here, haven't they, Pop? What do you think of it? Pop, uh, you know, Wilma and I, uh, we made a quiet survey in depth this week of uh, the kind of places available. And, well, we find that this uh, place, it, it just comes out uh, head and shoulders above anything in the way of uh, re retirement village. Looks like sort of an old people's home to me, Gerald. Older than God, most of them. You know, you've got your mother's eyes, Gerald. Did you know that? Have I ever told you that? She was a wonderful woman. I noticed it at times like this. She got a funny liquid thing came into her eyes whenever she was confused or sad or anything like that. I think I've got the picture now, Gerald. Not an unusual thing. 
Year, year and a half after the baby's born, mother goes to pieces, depression sets in. Nerves, forget the scientific name for it, severe paranoia sometimes, too. Well, I'm sorry to see it happen in Wilma's case, son, but say la vie. She wants me out of the house. All right, she wants me out of the house. I'll leave until she's feeling better, but, well, this isn't quite the kind of establishment I had in mind. Oh, Pop, now take a look at it like this. Now, just relax now. I just thought you'd like to take a look at this place. It's deluxe all the way. It's got private apartments and everything. And take advantage of the research that I did for you. Do you poke around while you're here, and you see if it strikes your fancy. All right, fair enough. Might as well. Let's have a look around while we're here. <laughs> well, if you don't like it, it's OK. If you do like it, well, we come back one of these days. We have a talk with the manager, this Mr. Weaver, and we find out what he's got available. Now, now how about that? Huh? Mr. Kotzer? How you do? And Mr. Kotzer. How, do? <laughs> How are you feeling today, young man? Uh, great, fit as a fit. I believe we've got everything here. My father had a complete physical about six good, months ago. Good, good, good. Well, that's repetitious. Ought to be simplified. Save you a lot of time and money. A lot of damn rigmarole just to rent an apartment for three months. <laughs> Come on in. Come on. Now, let's uh, see. We decided on Suite 78. Well, 78 will be available I've on filled Monday. I've so many forms since I was in the Army. 4 a.m., they unloaded us at Fort Bliss, November, and cold enough to freeze... This is Dr. McKernan. McKernan. How do you do? Dr. M.D. or Ph.D.? Dr. McKernan's our resident psychologist specializing in interpersonal relationships. I'll turn you over to her now, Mr. Kotcher, and she'll explain the program. Most people find it a rather enjoyable couple of hours taking these tests. Pop, I'll come tests. back and take you up in an hour. So. Nobody's saying anything about any tests. They're just part of our service. Oh, just excuse me for a moment, please. Now, Gerald. A new element has been added here. I don't like it. I don't like the look of it at all. Now, I know what Wilma thinks of me, but I discount that. She's not well. Now, tell me, Gerald, do you think your old man has slipped his trolley? I mean, do you think that I belong in a laughing academy? Pop, it is nothing like that. Now, you got the wrong idea. Now, this is a retirement setup, but that's all. It's a beautiful place. It's fun and games. It's the kind of thing that anybody would dream of. We just want to make you happy here at Sunnydale, Mr. Kotcher. That's the crux of it. It helps us to have your compatibility profile and your motivational mechanic. Then we can put you through the computer. Not me, you don't. So we can give you directional guidance and integrate your recreational structure and so on. Up your recreational structure. Oh, it looks like a tree that's charred with some snow around it. Do you like Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll? I wouldn't like it by anyone else. Do you have any children who must live with you? No. Please answer these questions, true or false. Generally, in this world, if you don't look out for yourself, no one else will. False. I frequently give others a helping hand. True. Did I say something wrong? Time. Duck. Dog. Nothing. Trees. Two cows. Two cows. An 
inexperienced spermatozoan, about 15 years old, asking directions to the nearest fallopian tube. Here's one to go on, Duncan. You can say that again. Mess from A to B. Well, perhaps we can salvage something. You ever want any free national advertising for anything? You just tell her something in strictest confidence. You just tell Candy. Candy? I want you to remember, dear. I want you to come to me with anything that's on your mind, just like I was your mother and not just your sister in law. I want you to feel free. And I fell into that. And Miss Candy ever hustle me? She ever. Great. Half a semester creative ceramic shot to help. Perhaps we can fix it with some of that wonderful white glue they have nowadays. Tomorrow's oh, Friday. Right. She's one more Christmas present. Why should I, anyway? When pink Lily and right out to Peter. Big brother knows what's good for little sis. All right. Get on the hotline. Tell Wilma the big news. Get me fired. Shouldn't have said anything to Gerald about it. Big, big mistake once I thought it over. Well, I'd like to try and make a minute before I leave. Peter, all of ten minutes to get the glad tidings on Miss Siebert's desk. Girls counselor, are you kidding? Whole hour she had me in there yesterday. Pushy footing around the big point. Back again today with all the returns in Erica, all fixed up now with a crummy job in San Bernardino. Pushing old hair around with a broom and some beauty parlor. I'm great for Peter. You just get yourself pregnant and wham bang off to San Berdu. Are you looking for me, Mr. Katcha, for any reason? Yes, I uh, well, then help me schlep some of this stuff home if you want to. Schlep? Thanks, Mr. Kachi. Just pop all that on top. What's that? It's a little something to send you on your way. You mean money? Oh, uh, well, you tell Wimble to let's just forget it. Oh, it's from me and Duncan. Just a little token of our esteem. Take it back. Please take it back. See you. I wish you'd reconsider. Why is a big word around my house these days? You know that, Mr. Kutcher? Why, why? Why didn't you do something or say something to you when you missed? I'm the world champion misser, that's why. Never come around on time yet, so how was I supposed to know I was? I can't get that through to my brother. He thinks he's very understanding. He doesn't understand anything. He says, well, now, let's consider the practicalities. It's obviously too late for a safe abortion. Well, even if I had found out in time, I wouldn't have. Too many girls messed up for life from that. How 
much money were you going to give me, just for example? I made it $40. I thought that might compensate. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Cuncher. Don't know how long I'll be able to work or even how much I'll be making or getting from Peter. I really whop you for any decent maternity clothes. So I'll take it if you don't mind. My pleasure. But just as a temporary loan, I'll send you an IOU. Not necessary at all. I'll be away for a little while myself, a little business trip. You got any use for a good combination lock? My pocket. Thank you.
The grapes are in the kitchen on the second refrigerator shelf. And if you start on the dip, I'll be there in a minute. I'm in real trouble. Everyone arrived earlier than I thought. Okay? Okay, thanks. Trick or treat! <gasps> oh, my... Gerald! Gerald, come quick. Something's happened. Hi, Pop. Hi, Wilma. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, Pop! Hi, <laughs> guys. Where did you come from? Hey. You all right? <laughs> huh? Just fine, fine, Gerald. <laughs> Just thought I'd pop in. Never would have recognized you, Gerald. Not in a million years. Absolutely marvelous. How's old Dunk? How's my boy? Jerry, everyone's asking where you are. I'm coming, I'm coming. Wilma, some kind of a fish? A mermaid. Oh, striking, very effective. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, just thought I'd drop in, son. Found myself in this part of the world. Huh? Postcards kept you abreast of my movements. Didn't worry about me, did you, Gerald? Well, we, we had... Weren't worried, huh? No, look, I'm delighted to see you, and I know that Wilma is too, but the crowd came in kind of early on. It threw her timing off. Let, just let me sure. put it in a... Sure, sure, I understand, right? son. Go huh? right ahead. I'll make myself scarce. But listen, Gerald, uh, I find that uh, things have changed a bit around here. My room, for example. Where, uh, where would you like me to hang out? Just, 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 just hang on. He's saying, just hold the phone. Yes. Oh, listen, there, uh, Pop. There's a letter for you. I think I opened it by mistake. It's on the dresser. Right. Thank you, Gerald. Gil, Gil, the taxi's waiting. Right. Gil, I'll take him on first thing in the morning. Hey there, Dunk, old boy. How are you, son? Where are you off to, huh? Don't go away now. We'll be bobbing for apples later. Oh, we're off to Mrs. Pugh's house, that's what. Uh, Mrs. Cotcher did not want him overstimulated. Oh, I see. Yes, I'm sorry, ma'am. See you in the morning, Dunk. Give you a full report. God bless, old boy. Brought you some presents from up north. and I know where she went. I don't know. And I don't care. Permanently employed here, I gave her the monthly rate. She stays five days. Five days. How much does she owe you? I'll inform my principals. I didn't say she owed me anything. I said she was a tramp. I know a tramp when I see one. You a bill collector? Private investigator. I believe a substantial sum of money is coming to her. Quite a bag full. I'll bet. <laughs> I'll give you a bag full. Down at Helen's. Just ask Helen. What happened was there was this big stink, you see. The way it is, the public doesn't know about it much, but you have to be licensed, a licensed operator, if you're going to touch the customers. Helen tried to say Ricky lied and told her she was licensed to and was giving shampoos. Uh, where did she go? Palm Springs, that's all I know. She told me she met this person that knew about this receptionist opening at this shop in Palm Springs, and that's where she was going. No address. Thank you very much. Oh, well, say Sissy said hello if you find her.
Pardon me, miss. I'm looking for Mr. Miss Kodger. Erica. What in the world are you doing to Palm Springs? Dennis, it's Henri. Dennis is his real name. Makes girls wear all this globberish. Part of the image or something. What's it? Greg. Half what comes into the shop is Holt was imperial to work with in the first place. One foot in the grave and scared about getting old and taking it out on you. Mercy will who? Cole. Depression when you think of it. But I'm not going to make it my life's work. Just a stop grasp. I didn't even tell Peter what happened in San Berdu. I just said it was better in my situation. I'm going to send the checks for this doctor I'm going to hear. Dr. Cadillo. Simply adorable. Which is correct? Ask Dr. Cadillo about the milk. Just in case I might want to nurse the baby. But I certainly don't. Just ask him. He said I didn't have to. Wouldn't do any good, he said. He said, cows don't drink milk, do they? <laughs> I don't quite understand. Cows don't drink milk, but they eat grass, and they produce milk. Wants you to eat grass? No, the cows eat the grass. He just wants me to uh, drink the milk if I want to. I don't have to. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard the Palm Springs Aerial Tramway. We're traveling at a speed of 1,600 feet a minute. The valley station is at an elevation of 2,643 feet. The upper station, 8,516 feet. Total distance, two and one half miles. We pass over five steel towers. The tallest was the first. It's 214 feet high and is the only tower with access by road. The other four towers were built by... Do they check these things regularly? I'm trying to recall where it was that one of these contraptions broke loose. Austria or someplace. Jungfrau, perhaps eight or ten years ago. I don't believe they ever put their finger on the cause. Overloaded, metal fatigue, or just what? Are there any questions? As I remember, they didn't even recover all the bodies, did they? What? The snow was too deep down below. They tried with helicopters, but winds were too strong. Regular blizzard had to give up, too dangerous. Still there, I suppose. Truth is, Mr. Kotcher, this is my regular day off, all right. I've been mean to do this. It's one of the things you do here. Well, they're all days off now. Showing too much any minute to be dealing with the public anyway. The minute I got back to my room, there's Mrs. Yates, my landlady, all prim for action. All about how I was entitled to the left middle rack of the frost free, and she found my half a grapefruit over on top of the vegetable bin. I'll tell you, everything happens to me. Vinnie and I only did it three times. I know lots of girls who do it almost all the time, practically, and nothing ever happens. Well, that's baseball. Erica, I find Palm Springs salubrious. I've decided to stay a while. I've moved out of the hotel and rented myself a little house out in Cathedral City. Concrete block, fine, solid construction. Warm in winter, cool in summer. Marvelous location right down the road from Bob's Oasis Bowling Alley. Why don't you just come out there and live with me? I mean, keep house for me if you want to. A little light housekeeping whenever you feel up to it. You and the baby can stay there. There's sure plenty of sand. Sounds like a wonderful proposition, Mr. Kotcher. Uh-uh, no. He travels fastest who travels alone.
turkey dinner, gravy and dressing, mashed potatoes, seasoned peas and carrots. Yummy. Say, what's going on here? When did those people stop using tinfoil for the inside wrapper? Is that something new, some kind of an economy measure? It doesn't even sound like chocolate that way. You know, I used to save tinfoil during the first war, turn it into the government. Can't remember what they did with it. That isn't that a humdinger? Oh, Joe, it's perfectly beautiful. Oh. Merry Christmas Eve, Mr. Kotcher. Shouldn't leave your door open like that. They always have a lot of robberies around here at the height of the season. Well, I just wanted to ask you, Mr. Kotcher, if your offer to me was still good, I might take you up on it for a while. Just had another big fight with Mrs. Yates, my landlady. Well, I could work off the money I owe you since I'm not doing anything right now. Here's your Christmas present sweater. But watch out for the pins. I couldn't finish it up until I measured your arms. I remember what you said about just down the road from a bowling alley. Did it again. Yeah, I left the seat up again. served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. Washed the window and I cleaned the floor. Polished up the handle of the big front door. Polished up the handle so carefully. Now I am the room. Clean navy. Polished up the handle so carefully that now I am the ruler of the... Oh! Say, we did, we did the right thing here. Very good choice, I must say. Desert gold, high degree of visibility, easy to see in the dark. Never know when we want to reach Cordillo in the middle of the night. Taxi here? All set. I don't want to keep him waiting. Obstetricians are very busy at this particular time of the year for some reason. He thinks maybe it has something to do with when summer vacations are. <laughs> Who does this thing belong to? No beauty, but she's sound as a dollar. I looked over the market and I decided against the new car at the present time. Big depreciation the minute you turn the key. Didn't see any sense to it, when what we need right now is good, solid transportation. Save us a fortune in taxis alone the next few months. Any time of the day or night you want to get in for a ride, you want to take a drive, a little soda or something, you get right in, hop right in. The thing that, you see, I gave this a lot of thought. And why I bought it is because it has a clutch. Oh, nothing to be said about automatic transmission. That's fine. I drove Gerald's once, but lots can go wrong, too. Gonna be good to get behind the wheel of a car again. I drove up here this afternoon, and I want to tell you that I drove the Idlewild Green for about 10 minutes, and the thing did nothing. See you in three weeks. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Nice to have met you, Mr. Kotcher. Right, same here. Uh, goodbye, Doctor.
Goodbye, Dr. Cadillo. Goodbye. All right. Oh, doctor, I, uh, she, uh, she's not getting too heavy. She? No, no, she's fine. No, you just keep after her. Right. My wife, Vera, was a great believer in big salads. Worked just fine with our son, Gerald. Be sure to take your vitamins, Erica. Hi, right, Jerry. <laughs> Macaroni hasn't dried yet. That's going to be February. Wasn't going to bother with February, but then I had this idea to make it Miss Siebert, girl's counselor, so-called. Really need some modeling clay to make the stomach fatter. Well, it's a basic shape is there, a very good foundation. Every time I think of Miss Siebert, what about the father, dear? Aren't you going to tell him, dear? I guess I just stared at her, and the next thing is, why not, dear? Well, I told her why not, and I don't think she believed me. I just told her he wasn't a person I knew that well. That was why not. You know what baffles old Miss Siebert? It's why so many girls know ten times more already than her grandmother ever did. How chromosomes splits up and things. Just don't bother to protect themselves, as she puts it. I've wondered about that myself. Surely you're aware of the modern methods available to you, aren't you, Erica, dear? Started to say, you don't know me very well, Miss Siebert. I'm not planning to make a career out of it, really work at it like that. I'm not that kind of girl. I didn't, though. How can you explain to somebody like you can't spend all your time protecting yourself, as she calls it? Makes it dirty and some kind of a commitment instead of just what happens. It's an insulting idea. Oh, very original. Very well done. Oh, I inherited this talent for gooping things up from my mother. When we had this place called the Pantry in Oceanside, she was always scooping up the cakes. She was real artistic, the kind of customers we got didn't appreciate. I've got half an ocean sometimes to take up where my parents left off, and Daddy's brakes gave out on the ridge route. There was a four-car collision written up in the paper. I wonder why I don't remember the funeral. I do remember I wrote a poem about it, but it wasn't any good. Put too many horses in it. Riderless stallions searching the lonely, trackless night. Kidding me. Mr. Kutcher? Mr. Kutcher, he kicked me. He just kicked me. Well, what do you know? <laughs> It was a big Buick, I think. Daddy did a lot of work on it himself. Our 29 Packard, that was a beauty. Two-tone brown. Came with silk window shades, standard equipment. Vera always used to sit in the back and pull them all down tight whenever she changed Gerald. Never could see what difference that made. Couldn't see what harm it would do anybody to get a look at his pink little Packard, 25 miles an hour. <laughs> but she pulled them all down anyway. Vera wanted a girl to go with Gerald. She said they were easy to raise in boys, more tractable. I was traveling with Munger's Hardware and Metals out of Omaha at the time. Well, I guess we just put it off too long. Pow. What's the date? Uh, the 4th. Stuffy in here. Fire uses up the oxygen.
consumption much anymore, do you? Gone out of fashion, I suppose. Hello? How about barbecued lamb chops for supper? That doesn't necessarily follow, young lady. My daughter-in-law, Wilma, was taken directly to surgery for a cesarean section. It was an emergency. Her husband, Gerald, was in no condition to fill anything out. I did that myself later on. This way, please. Having a baby should be one of the most rewarding experiences of your life. And Desert Valley does everything possible to make it so for you. There are certain necessary rules, however, regarding visiting hours and so on. May I call your attention in addition to the fact that children under 17 are not permitted in the maternity wing. Now, Nurse Barrons will narrate our film. With the next contraction, the actual delivery begins. The doctor first assists the top of the baby's head under the pubic bone. Then he helps the face gently over the perineum. Now, Rotating the head a full half circle so that the higher shoulder can be eased through the arch. The other shoulder and arm follow. When the chest is delivered, the baby takes its first independent breath and so commences to cry while the delivery continues with great care, slowly, steadily. At this point, the doctor takes the baby's feet in his hand, elevates them to complete the necessary drainage of amniotic fluid. The baby's lusty response is, of course, an automatic, beneficial response. He is placed on the mother's abdomen. The cord is clamped uh, thus. She feels not the slightest pain when the cord is cut in this manner. The baby is now on his own. A new life has begun. Oh, um... I am curious about the frequent use here of the word womb, which is fundamentally a poetic expression, as in fruit of the womb, meaning children, of course, and the womb of time, uh, whatever that means, and so on. I find it interesting that doctors prefer this term to the more precise scientific designation, uterus. I'll tell you now, Mr. Kotzer, and thanks for putting up that fence for a playpen. But I've, I've got everything worked out through Dr. Cadillo and these people he's known for a real long time. They've been waiting ages on all kinds of lists and things. So they're going to take the baby right away so I won't get used to it or anything. They're older people, but the perfectly lovely Dr. Cadillo says, and pretty well fixed. Taking me to the racket club on Tuesday, so they must be. here, Mr. Kotcher. Oh, no bother. I didn't want to make a production out of it, Mr. Kotcher. I told Mrs. Ballinger I had to be in Palm Springs shopping anyway, and I was meeting a girlfriend later. Uh, thanks for bringing me. You do whatever you want to do, and I'll take a taxi back.
very difficult at times living with a pregnant woman. You never know. My granddaughter now, she suddenly decided that she wants to have the baby adopted. She's gone off tonight to talk to some people about it. She'll never do it, never in a million years. Just a mood, that's the way they are. Well, my name is Kotcher. I live in Cathedral City. You wouldn't care to join me for a beer, would you? I know of a fine little inexpensive place just around the corner. Simple assembly instructions for not away cribs. Step one Insert one and three eighths machine screws A through holes and posts and engage threads of threaded bushings B embedded in ends of stationary side C. of spring support brackets. Simple assembly instructions. Through holes and posts. at Indio yesterday, but this is the first case of measles I've had. You must have picked yourself up astray, Mr. Kotcher. German or regular? You just keep warm. Oh, doctor, at this stage of the game, we can't take any chances of Erica. I better go to no, a no, hotel. No, 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 you stay right where you are. She's going to spend a few days with the Ballinger. Now, uh, I don't know where I can find a practical nurse, but I'm going to get somebody over here as soon as I can to feed you and take care of you. Now, stay in bed and keep warm. Take care of yourself now, Mr. Kotcher. You too, Erica. Oh, Dr. Cordillo, uh, would you tell whomever you're sending over to stop at the drugstore and pick up a few Tampico Coronas? They're four for a dollar. Right. Tampico Coronas. Oh, doctor? Measles aren't like asthma, are they? Psychogenic, so to speak. I mean, they wouldn't come from any sort of emotional or mental trouble, would they? No more than any other virus. Hey, 
Joe. Hey, Joe. Call me out. What's my photo at, Joe? Oh, uh, well, there, Pablo. No mail today, no letters. Como se sopa, hijo. So do me a favor, will you call Cordillo? Ask him if he doesn't think I ought to be stimulating the vital functions. Get a little ambulatory. Muy pronto te vas a sentir a plano. Coma, make some hairs grow on the chest. Muchas gracias. Somebody by the name of uh, Kotcher live here? Yes, yes. Well, I'm looking for my sister, Ricky. She's uh, supposed to be working for him, typing or something. He's uh, some kind of a writer. Is he? Yeah. Oh, yes, well, yes. Ricky, you must be your brother, Peter. Yeah. Well, come in. Come in, Mr. Herzl Steel. Uh, just Steel. S-T-I-E-L. Where's Ricky? She's off visiting some wealthy people in Palm Springs at the moment, expecting a baby, you know. Well, she sent me these papers to sign. I'm her guardian, and I have to approve of what she does, getting somebody to adopt it and all that. And uh, I had to come down this way anyway, so I thought I'd just... Why don't you uh, leave it with me? She'll be here any day now. You see, she gets it all right. Yes, indeedy. Guard it with my life. Give it to her personally. Take it right over there, right over. Well, I gotta make Banning by one o'clock. This isn't my territory, you know. I'm Southwestern Cal, L.A. Oh, to T.J. I'm a yeah. traveling man myself. 35 years, metals and hardware. It's changed over to farm machine here in 29, just before the crash. I gotta straighten out Southeast, and he doesn't know when to get tough. I mean, imagine letting any store claim breakage on 10 dozen plushies. Plushies don't break. I mean, who do they think? They're kidding. Say, I wouldn't mind handling a line like this myself. My grandson, Duncan, sure would like to... You expect a little damage around Christmas time, mostly plastics, a little bastard, they grab something off the shelf and pow! You know, store claims container failure. Well, all right, we know, and they know, and we make it up on the next building. But I'm not about to let them get away with ten dozen plushies. Well, I'll tell Erica that you were here. She sure will be sorry to miss you. Eureka, Fraulein Hersenstiel, savez vous? Almost due now, according to my calculations. Very worried about a difficult time for women the last couple of weeks. Get to do very peculiar things, the damnedest sorts of things. El they... señor y la señora salieron en el coche grande el domingo. A Los Ángeles, muy lejos. Los Angeles, Erica, what for? Ah, Ricky. Ricky salió en el Corvette esta mañana. Quise pararla, pero no pude. Es muy malo viajar en coche cuando uno está embarazada, pero no se les puede decir nada a las muchachas estos días. Son muy malos. Son terribles. Se fue. Se fue solita a las montañas. How's that again? A las montañas. Montañas. Ricky se fue en coche a las montañas altas. Montana. Kill Montana, madam. No, no. Venga, venga conmigo. Le voy a enseñar una cosa que le puede explicar todo lo que ocurrió. Ay, caramba, qué desgracia cuando uno no habla el mismo idioma. Lo siento mucho, señor. Caramba, qué desgracia cuando uno no habla el mismo idioma. Yo pienso que se fue a la casita en la montaña para donde pasa en el weekend. ¿Ve usted la nota? Lea, lea. Yo no entiendo, pero pienso que significa lo que antes le dije. Dorothy, darling, nature calls, gone to cabin to think, took Corvette, okay? Love, Ricky. Entiende ahora, señor? Entiende? A la, a la cabina, en Goldamine Creek. ¿Eh? Goldamine Creek. ¿Sí? ¿Está seguro que comprende el mapa, eh? Yes, okay, on the map. Bueno. 
Y recuerde, señor, cuando llegue a la gasolinera, váyase a la izquierda, al camino de Goldamine Creek. Mire, derecha, right. izquierda. And left. De vuelta a la I izquierda. Got, right. right. I, I go izquierda, left at the gasolinería. Sí, señor. Right. Thank you very much. Buena suerte. Eh? Up here, thank you. I just wanted to tell you that Claudio's given me a clean bill of health. Got some stuff at the hardware store and fumigated the house last night, dusted off the welcome mat, so anytime you feel like coming home now. Oh, your brother stopped by with these papers you wanted him to sign. We had an interesting talk. I don't see how a lot of girls can adopt out their babies to just anybody, do you? Somebody they don't even meet or say hello? This way I'll be able to picture how things are going if I want to. How Dorothy and Phil are getting along with Chris. We all voted and decided on Chris if it's a boy. Christopher. It's an intelligent name. Now, I can't recall knowing any Christophers personally, just in books. Couldn't have been luckier for me how it worked out when you come to think of it. Now I know what wonderful people Dorothy and Phil are. How it happened just because I had this opportunity on account of your measles. You did me a big favor, you know that, Mr. Kotcher? Don't mention it. That's just something I was thinking about in general. You want to go for a hike? I should have gone to the state of New York or one of those places where they just do it now and get it over with. This is getting to be a drag, and I don't even have a decent education yet. Say, so what have you had to eat today? I stopped by the Italian delicatessen on the way over here and picked up some goodies. What do you say we have a little picnic, huh? How about that? Oh, uh, maybe we better start getting back. I'd like to be out of here before it gets dark. I want to go lie down for a while. Very well. Maybe you better take me to the hospital now if you don't mind. Right, right. right. I'm not going too fast, am I? Be careful right about here, Mr. Kotcher. I slipped this morning. You fell? Well, just a little. I slipped and sat down kind of hard, that's all. Maybe I started something happening, do you think? <laughs> First place I find open. You better start timing those. 
Here, railroad watch. My Uncle Frank gave it to me the year I graduated from MU. With the sweep hand and the little numbers around on the outside, you can time the speed of a train right down to a cat's whisker. All you have to do is watch the mile posts. to the springs, they tell me this road drops 5,000 feet in 15 miles. Makes your ears pop. Should have brought some gum. <laughs> Had a Hudson did the same thing, just at a certain speed. Never could get it fixed. No, it couldn't have been the Hudson. Didn't have it yet when Gerald was born. Look, where are we now? Well, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. It's it, things look different, differently in the dark. There we are. What's the interval now? There isn't any. It's just all together. Awful good deal. Use it tight. Mr. Cotcher! Mr. Cotcher! You better, better take me to Lady's room while we're here. Lady's Mr. Cotcher! I'll find out where it is. Lady's room! for a key. I'll be right back. I'll go get some help. I... No! No, it's too late, Mr. Cutcher. Happening, it's happening now. I think I'm gonna die. Hot water. I have to have some hot water. Oh, <laughs> 
thing I've done in my whole life. Having a baby in a filling station. Everything okay, doctor? Yes. Surprisingly so. I wasn't quite sure what to do about the rest of the cord. I didn't cut it too short, did I? No, no, just right. Fine job. Oh, thanks very much, Doctor. Thank you. I imagine that you've uh, given her a little something, put her under sedation? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. Good idea, Doctor. Have a cigar. All right, to go in. Of course.
read this crazy story the other day in the L.A. Times, see, about this girl who got pregnant. Anyway, she told the guy and he crashed. Dropped out. Well, she had it later, of course, at this place. And the first thing she did was telephone. Tell him. Anyway, you know what? He brought some flowers, came around there, and married her. They even finished high school. I thought it was kind of sweet. Listen, you want to run down next weekend or not, Vinny? No big fat reason. We could catch up. Hold on. Hey, and uh... oh. I was just talking to somebody. Oh, I'm still doing a little babysitting. Only it's on a different basis now. Listen, Vinny, something I want to talk to you about. An idea I had about us. I can't do much in that line right now. I just can't. I'd like to see you anyway. It's something to show you. So save your money. I don't think this proposition I had in mind would interest you anyway. On second thought, it doesn't interest me much either. for a midnight snack? Mm -hmm. Fix you anything? No. First years are most interesting, you know. It takes them that time to get all their equipment, develop their nervous system. You'll get a big kick out of it. is pretty worried, you know. Just dropping out of sight like that. We didn't even know where to start. You could have sent us a postcard. Now, that is the least thing that you could have done, Pop, was to send us Sorry a postcard. That, Gerald. I should have done that, but I, I, I didn't want you to worry. I was pretty busy, you know, with one thing we and another. We didn't even I... know where to start looking for you. Do you realize that the Bureau of Missing Persons is not even listed in the phone book? That I right? thought it came under the FBI. Anyway. By accident, Wilma happened to run into Erica's sister-in-law at the supermarket yesterday, and she mentioned that Erica had come back with the baby and all that. Who's that? So, Erica's sister-in-law. So we put two and two together. It's the last place in the world we figured to find you, Pop. You take cream, Gerald? No, I don't take cream, Pop. Oh, yes. Wilma? No, Pop. 
You know, they tell me that this immediate area has more millionaires per capita than just about anywhere in the world. Boy, that was, that was a really tasty meatloaf you made, Pop. Yeah. That was really good meatloaf, wasn't it, woman? Friend of mine, he gave me the recipe, old Mexican recipe. Yes, sir. You know, I found it pretty expensive shopping here at first, but then after a while, when I got to know my way around... <laughs> Pops, uh, there's, something, there's something I want to say. I've been thinking back about a lot of things, and I realized that I was upset about a lot of things that, that weren't... well, that aren't very important. Well, that's pretty natural, perfectly natural, Wilma. Everybody's got his ups and downs. It's a big job running a house and raising a family. Yes, I guess, but... I'm just not going to be as compulsive as I was about things. I've given up sewing as a hobby. What Wilma means, Pop, is that your room is available again. Your bed is back. And it looks like it's going to be a hot summer, so there'll be plenty of watering. What we're saying is, whenever you get tired of the desert, we miss you, Pop. We really do. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that, Wilma. But, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I'm thinking of buying this house. Going to have a word pretty soon with the old lady who owns it. She's getting along, and uh, well, it's a very nice little place. And I imagine that you and Dunk will want to come down and get out of the smog for a few days. Of course, I'll be popping up to L.A. for Christmas, Thanksgiving, and assorted days. And then Eric and the boy will be wanting to come down here for weekends had an interesting proposition from a fellow the other day. He wants me to run his household and hardware store on Palm Canyon Drive, right next to a Dayton nut shop. Well, I think I might take him up on it. Thanks very much. I appreciate it, really. But I think I'll stay put for a while. Climate suits me fine. Dear Chris, the only reason I am writing this letter is so that if you ever go poking into who you are, you'll find this message from your mother. I would like to keep you, but there is just no possible way. I probably shouldn't, but I've got this crazy urge to tell you that even if I did give you away, I liked you a lot. I don't think it's right to say I loved you. People are funny about that word and what it means. So I'm not sure, but I loved holding you and touching you. Oh, you old a lot, speaking in prenatal terms, that is. 
to a certain man, a Mr. Kotcher by name. Although that isn't important because he was pretty old already and I think he'll die pretty soon. <coughs> before you would be big enough to even know him, really, if you know what I mean. So I don't know why I'm bringing it up now, Chris. Except Mr. Kotcher, this man, was swell to us. It was an awful pain in the ass the way a lot of the time old people are. <laughs> but he was really swell. I guess he was lonely. And the way I figure it, he was old and ending, and kids and babies were new and just beginning. The one thing he didn't do, I wished he'd do, maybe he was afraid I'd get the wrong impression, was to sometimes touch me. Just once in a while, the way a man does. Take hold of you and make you feel good. Like my brother, uptight old Peter, never did. Well, I guess you get the picture of Mr. Kotcher. Oh, P.S., you might just like to know this. He sort of delivered you, which is the technical expression for helping when you're born. I won't go into all this. It's pretty complicated. Why? But I must say that for not being a doctor, and all thumbs otherwise, old Mr. Kotcher did quite a job in the emergency. Absent a few marbles, maybe. But conditions being more favorable... He'd have made you one hell of a grandfather. Hey, Dutch, you had supper? Vamos a vacilar. Come on, come in. Come on, let's go do something someplace. Go have a couple of beers, maybe. Vamos a patalear por ahí. How's that again? Raise a little hell! Conseguimos dos viejas! Nine moment! <laughs> 